everyone, I'm Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video three for the Lupin laptop bag. In this video, we're going to be sewing all of our interior pockets. So we're going to sew the laptop pocket, the interior zipper pocket, and the expandable pockets. The pieces that you're going to need, you're going to need your both of your main body lining pieces with fusible woven interfacing on the wrong side. Then on one side, you're going to need your laptop pocket pieces. So the one, the outward facing piece that has the foam interfacing attached, the laptop pocket lining piece with fusible woven, and the two tab closure pieces, one that has fusible woven and the other one that has fusible woven and fusible fleece. And your Velcro or hook and loop tape, it should be a, a three inch long piece and I'm using one inch wide. I wouldn't use uh, a narrower uh, tape, you really want it to hold well. So I would recommend using at least one inch wide. For the other side, you're going to need your uh, interior zipper, so either a 12 inch pre-made or 14 inches of zipper tape. To, it, to install the interior zipper pocket, you'll need the interior zipper facing piece. That one has fusible woven interfacing. Your interior zipper pocket lining pieces also both have fusible woven interfacing and your two expandable pocket pieces. So this is the one I'm going to use for the outside and this will be on the inside of the pocket. And you need um, both of them to have fusible woven interfacing, uh, fused to the wrong side. We're going to start by sewing our Velcro to the laptop pocket. So this is the laptop pocket piece that has the foam interfacing. So you're going to need the hook part of your Velcro. So this is the rougher portion. And we, we've, this part here is three inches, but we're actually going to trim off one inch from this piece. It's a little bit too long. And then we want to sew it in the center of the pocket. So we're going to fold that pocket piece in half, wrong sides together. And we're going to mark that center. Just like that. And now you can use a pin to hold the Velcro in place. You can use a little bit of double-sided tape if that's something that you have. I'm just going to use um, a couple of pins to hold it in place. So I want the Velcro to be centered and I would like the top edge of the Velcro to be one inch away from the top edge of the pocket. I'm gonna use my ruler. and then center that at the center mark and pin it in place. Like so. And then we're going to go over to the machine. We're going to sew the Velcro in place all the way around the edges with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, you can even sew twice. It wouldn't hurt to sew twice just to make sure it's very secure. And then make sure that you backstitch at the end. Thank you. 
Once your Velcro is sewn in place, you're going to take the lining piece and place it over top so they are right sides together. And then you're going to pin or clip them along that top edge. And then we're going to sew them together along the top edge, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once they're sewn together along the top edge, we're going to flip the pieces so they are wrong sides together. And then we're going to press that seam allowance along the top edge. I like to clip along the bottom here just to make sure that the bottom edges are aligned. And then you can press from the right side, but just stay away from that hook and loop tape so you don't melt it. It will melt with, with the iron. And now once it's pressed, you can go ahead and top stitch along that top edge. Normally I top stitch with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, but because the thickness of the foam, it's a little bit easier if you use 1 quarter inch seam allowance here. Once the top edge is top stitched, you can take one of your main body lining pieces and place that pocket over top. And you want to have those bottom rounded corners of your pocket to be aligned with the bottom rounded corners of the main body piece. And then clip those together. And then we're just going to base the pocket in place along the sides and the bottom edges and along this side uh, with one quarter inch seam allowance. It's just to hold it in place for now. Now that we have our pockets uh, basted to the lining piece, we could just set that aside for just a second. And now you're going to need your two tab closure pieces. And what we're going to do is install the other portion of our Velcro to the tab closure. So you're going to need the loop part of your Velcro. And we're gonna leave it at a, three, a length of three inches. And we want to sew it in the center. So again, we're going to fold, and this is the piece that has the fusible fleece. We're going to fold that in half and mark the top center. And then you're going to place your Velcro over top. And you want the top edge of your Velcro here to be 5 eighths of an inch below the top edge. And then pin that in place.
So again, you're going to sew all the way around with one eighth of an inch seam allowance, uh, at least once, but it's a little bit better if you do it twice. And then just make sure that you backstitch at the end. Now that I have the vel Velcro attached to this one piece, I'm going to place them right sides together and clip them together along uh, the sides and the top curved edge. You're going to leave this section here unsewn. Okay, so we're going to start at the bottom corner, backstitch, so all along the top, go slowly around the curved edges, and then all the way down here, and then backstitch again. So they're sewn together except for this bottom edge where we're going to turn it. So the first thing you're going to do before turning is trim your seam allowance to 1 8 of an inch. Now we're going to turn this right side out. And then I roll the seam allowance between my fingers and that kind of finger presses it a little bit, but then we're going to also press it with the iron. Now, when you press it on the Velcro side, make sure that you stay far away from the Velcro, otherwise it will melt. And now we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to top stitch with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Now that we've top stitched the tab closure, we're going to sew it to the top. And I seem to have forgotten my center marks. So I'm just going to do that now. And we're also going to fold this in half and make a mark along the top here so that we can find the center. And then we're just going to add a little thread here driving me crazy. Okay, so you're going to place this with the center marks aligned. And then also put the set the tab down as if you're going to close it just to make sure that your velcro pieces are lining up. And then you're just going to go over to the machine and do a quick basting stitch to hold the tab in place. Okay, so now we have one um, assembled lining, main body lining piece. We're gonna set that aside for now. So now we're going to move on to our expandable pocket. The first thing that we are going to do is to pin those pieces right sides together along the top edge. These are very wide pieces. So we're going to pin or clip them along this top edge. Okay. 
And then we're going to sew them together along that top edge, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now that the pieces are sewn together along the top edge, we're going to flip them so they are wrong sides. Well, first we're gonna flip them open. I do find it easier to press the top edge if I do it in a two-step way. So first what I do is I press that seam allowance open. And this is just personal preference. You don't have to do this step but I just find it makes it a little bit easier to press that top folded edge nicely. And then I flip them so they are wrong sides together and I press that top edge again. So now I'm going to top stitch this top edge and what I'm actually going to do as well just to make sure that the pocket layers stay together is I'm just going to quickly base stitch along the bottom edge. So now we're going to make marks on our pocket piece um, just to show where we're going to be pinching and pleating it. Um, so there is on page eight at the bottom, there is a, uh, a diagram showing your pocket and showing the uh, measurements where you're going to be making a mark. And you're going to be making those marks along the top and the bottom edge. It just helps to make um, nice straight pleats um, so I do find it easier so if I turn it this way and also turn my pocket this way it, I just find it makes it easier now if you have a clear ruler it's so useful for measurements like this um, because it's clear so the first so we're making marks starting from the left hand side of the pocket but I'm just rotating it. So this is the left hand side, that's the right hand side of your pocket. So your first mark is three quarter inches from the edge. And then make a mark on the top and the bottom. I use just a regular pencil because I've realized that they actually erase really easily from fabric. And I've had some bad experiences with fabric pens not coming off. Um, okay, so then st from those first two marks we made, we're going to measure one and a half inches. And make marks again. So it's one and a half inches away from those first three quarter inch marks. Now we're going to make marks five and a half inches away from those marks. Here's my paper. So we have five, five and a half. And then from those marks, it's one and a half. And then one and a half again. And 
And then you have to do a four inch mark, so four inches away. So every measurement is the distance from the previous set of marks that you've just made. So from the four inch mark, we're doing another one and a half inches. And then one and a half inches again. And then you're doing another five and a half inch mark. Bring that down. And then one and a half inches, and then the remainder, which is about three quarter inches. Now, if you note at the bottom here of diagram 32, certain lines I've uh, I've designated with a letter, so A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, at those marks, and if you look at the next diagram, I'm showing you that I want. Uh, line A, B, C, D, E, and F, I want you to fold the pocket piece at those marks and pinch them and then top stitch them. So it's easier, I think, if I show you. So line A, which is right here, I'm just going to pinch them so that they are the lining sides pinched together. And then I'm going to do that at the top and at the bottom. And then I also find it a tiny bit easier if I just press that, that pinch. So I've pinched them together here, lining sides together, top and bottom, at the mark A here, line A. And now I'm going to press those together. And now I'm going to uh, sew that fold and I'm going to use one eighth of an inch or even smaller. It's really just to hold that pleat in place. Now I like to start at the bottom edge, stitch, and then I sew to the top. And when I get to the top, I back stitch a couple of times. And once you've top stitched that first pleat, this is what it looks like. So now it's it's pinched all the way up and down the pocket piece. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the next marks. Um, so mark B is here, mark C. And then I have mark D and E, and then mark F.
Okay, so now that we have all of our folded edges completed, we're going to follow the diagram uh, number 35 on page 9, where it shows us which direction we should be folding these, uh, these pleated or pinched uh, edges. So it's, if you look in the top diagram on page 9, so it'll show you that A is folded towards that 3 quarter inch mark. So you want, you want the uh, sewn edge to meet that mark. And then use a clip to hold that in place. And then mark B should go in, be folded to, towards the right, towards the mark that's in the middle here. And then this sewn edge needs to also be folded in, this time to the left, so that it meets this the folded edge here, the sewn edge of this line. And then we're just, really what we're just doing is we're, we're creating pleats along the bottom edge of the pocket here. And then the very last one is to be folded in this direction towards the right. And now I'm just going to base these in place so I can remove the clips just along the bottom edge with one quarter inch seam allowance. So now you're going to take your remaining main body lining piece and you're going to place the expandable pocket over top. And you want the, so there's going to be a little bit of a difference here because you have rounded corners here at the bottom. So we're going to trim that um, a little bit later. So try not to worry about that too much for now. So what you really want is for the bottom edge here of the, I'm going to lose my papers, the bottom edge of the pocket to be lined up with the bottom edge of the main body, but you also want this left hand side to be aligned with the left hand side of the main body lining piece. I'm just going to clip this in place. this and then make sure that this is lined up. So right now this is just one big pocket but we're actually going to separate them into three pockets. So before I separate this into three pockets, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to base this pocket piece to the lining piece uh, just along the edges here and follow the curve of the, um, of the bottom corners here of the main body lining piece and that will help us know where we need to trim these. So I'm basting the expandable pocket with the main body uh, facing up, the wrong side of the main body lining piece facing up.
Okay, so now that the pocket piece is basted, I can actually just uh, round off the corners of the pocket piece. And now we need to sew here and here so that we separate this into three pockets. So I want the pockets to be straight. So I would fold these down and make sure that it's nice and smooth and then open it up and just use a pin to hold this in place. And then do the same thing for this one. Just flatten everything. And they should be meeting here at the mark that we made. Okay, and then open this up and add a pin. Okay, so now we're going to start sewing at this top edge here uh, where we have a mark. Make sure that you backstitch a couple of times and then sew all the way down until you get to the center here in between these two folded edges and backstitch again and then do the same for this one. Now we have uh, three expandable pockets, lots of storage space. The last thing we're going to do is sew our interior zipper pocket. So we're now going to sew the interior zipper pocket in our this um, main body lining piece with the expandable pocket. So we're going to be installing that right here. You're going to start by taking your <coughs> zipper pocket lining pieces and we're going to fold that bottom edge towards the wrong side about three eighths to half an inch it doesn't matter how much as long as it's equal on both pieces and we're going to press that fold and you're doing this for both pieces Now, on one of the pieces only, so not both, just the one piece, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to trim off one inch from the top straight edge. So not the folded edge, the top straight edge. And now it's going to be a little bit repetitive in terms of attaching these pieces to the zipper. It's exactly the same thing as you did for um, your exterior zipper pocket. The only difference here is that one of the lining pieces is shorter than the other, and they both have this folded bottom edge. But other than that, it is the same. So take the shorter piece and your, take your interior zipper. So this is either a 12 inch pre-made zipper or like I'm using 14 inches of zipper tape. <clears throat> and pin or clip it to the top straight edge. So not the folded edge, the other edge. And you want your pull to the right. And then we're going to sew this to the lining piece with one quarter inch seam allowance and make sure that you backsti backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now, same as the exterior pocket, we're flipping that lining piece away from the zipper. And then we're pressing it, including the seam allowance, away from the zipper. Okay. 
And now we're attaching the other side of the zipper to the top straight edge of the second lining piece. So this is exactly the same thing as we did for that exterior zipper pocket. And now we're sewing the zipper to the second lining piece along the top edge with one quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And now again, we're flipping that lining piece away from the zipper and pressing the lining and the seam allowance away from the zipper. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside for just a minute. Now you're going to need the zipper facing piece and you're going to need a fabric pen and a ruler. And we're going to draw a rectangle box on the wrong side that is 12 inches wide by 3 eighths of an inch high. And you want it centered, so I'm, st I'm leaving a gap of one inch from the edge here. pen wasn't working. I just use a regular pen. I'm a little bit of a, I guess maybe different that way. I don't really use fabric pens very often. Okay. And now I'm using a number five zipper. So I'm actually making the box a little bit bigger. So if you're using a number five zipper, like I am, uh, make your box uh, closer to half an inch high instead of three eighths of an inch. But if you're just using one of those little um, dress zippers, a number three zipper, you're going to want to make this only three eighths of an inch high. If you make it half an inch with a small dress zipper, then there's too much space around the zipper and you're going to see some of the stitching from when you attached the lining pieces to the zipper. Okay, so now we're going to pin our uh, facing piece to the main body lining piece. Um, we want to make sure that it's centered. Um, it actually doesn't really matter. I usually eyeball this part because even if it's not perfectly centered, it really doesn't show in the final bag. But if you really want to be precise, then you want to mark your centers. So you would fold this like this, wrong sides together and mark that center at the top here and then you want to do the same for the zipper facing okay and now you want to pin this so that the center marks are aligned and you want about one and one quarter inch space here so I'm going to grab my ruler there's one and one quarter inch space okay and now I'm going to pin that in place And then once this is pinned in place, we're going to sew around the rectangle box. And when I sew around the rectangle box, use a shorter stitch length. So make sure you're not set to a basting stitch or anything like that. And you want to keep your needle in the down position so that when you're rotating at the corners, your needle stays down and it makes nice sharp corners. Now, once your facing is sewn to your main body piece, you're going to 
<clears throat> you're going to draw a line through the center. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center, just somewhat close to the center. And then you're going to draw some diagonal lines from that center line to each of the four corners. Now, the key to having a nice rectangle opening for your zipper is how well you cut your diagonal lines. So first I start and I, I cut that center line. Make sure that you're not cutting all the way from end to end, you're only cutting from about half an inch from this side to half an inch from this side. And now you're going to need a pair of really sharp scissors with a really nice pointy end. And you're going to cut those diagonal lines, trying to go as close as you can to those stitches in the corner, but without cutting the stitches. And I know I hear a lot of frustration over, oh my, the corners of my zipper, uh, my rectangle opening for my zipper has a lot of puckers. The, there's only one reason for that, and it's you're not cutting close enough to the corners. Okay. So now we're going to pull that facing through that opening towards the wrong side, and we're going to press the seam allowance along the entire rectangle. Now, when you're doing this part, take your time um, and do a good job. Uh, I find it helps if you uh, wet your fingers and roll that seam between your fingers like this and really have it stick out so that when you're pressing it, you're press, you know, you can see, you should be able to see your stitches here in that, in that seam. And it really helps to just take your time doing this step so that you can have a really nice opening for your zipper pocket. Now, once your rectangle opening is nicely pressed, you're going to take your lining pieces attached to the zipper and you're going to lay the zipper with attached lining pieces right side facing. So the zipper is right side facing up and your two lining pieces are wrong side facing up, you want the shorter piece to be at the bottom and the taller piece to be at the top. And then you're going to place this over top and I want you to lift the edges here and your the edge of your facing piece here should be aligned with the edges of your zipper pocket lining pieces. Okay, and then I pin that side. Now I'm going to do the same on this side. Lift this up. Make sure that these are lined up and pin in place. Okay, and now I also want to put some pins. So the key to making this look nice is you want a consistent um, sized gap between the edge of the zipper coil and the folded edge of the rectangle opening. And I do pin a little bit, but I tend to leave most of it unpinned because I like to adjust as I'm sewing to make sure that that space between the, the folded edge here and the zipper coil is the same. Okay, so now we're going to sew all the way around the rectangle box uh, with one eighth of an inch seam allowance and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now the zipper is attached to the main body lining piece. You're going to flip this over. And now you're going to take the top folded edge of the top lining piece and fold it down so that it meets the folded edge of the bottom lining piece. 
and you're just going to clip those together along that bottom edge. Now we're not going to be sewing the bottom folded edges. We're actually going to leave that open to turn our bag. So what we are going to do is just add a couple of pins here. We're going to sew up the sides of our pocket, same as we did for the exterior zipper pocket, um, except this time we're just sewing. So you're not sewing the main body piece. You're going to push that aside and you're going to start at the top here, back stitch. So down to the bottom folded edge and then back stitch again. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side. So now the sides of the pocket are sewn up and I can open the zipper pocket and your, your hand should be able to go through the bottom. And that's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to assemble our gusset of our bag.